to be in the context of other people. I'm not wired to go through life alone. God created me to be known and to be fully loved. And relational depth just requires time. And remember that hurry is the enemy of depth. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul says, We loved you so much that we were delighted to share not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well, because you have become so dear to us. How do you become dear to somebody? You spend time with them. You say, Eric, I'm too busy to be fully known or to be fully loved. Then I say you're too busy. You're not living the way that God created you to live. If you're too busy to be in a small group where you can be fully known and fully loved, then you're too busy. You can't fulfill the biblical one another's. To love one another, to serve one another, to encourage one another, and to bear one another's burdens and go through life together with others, God's value is depth. Another value you might write down is the value of rest. God created us to rest, and we need to rest. And from where I stand, I can see a couple of you resting right now. (laughs) And that's okay, because you probably need it. The need for rest is wired into us. God wired me for the need to rest. He wired you for the need to rest. But not only did He wire it into each one of us, God infused it into the center of the universe when He created it. The Bible says on the seventh day that God rested. Then he gives us these life rules. One of life's rules is, if you really want to live life to the fullest, then experience the Sabbath, that you shall rest. God says, I wired you to need rest. God rested. It's the whole part of the universe, the way that God created it. Isaiah 58 says, If you watch your step on the Sabbath and don't use my holy day for personal advantage, if you treat the Sabbath as a day of joy, God's holy day as a day of celebration, if you honor it by refusing business as usual, making money, running here and there, then you'll be free to enjoy God. If there could be anything that's ever said about me, I don't want to be known as Eric Slusher was always so busy he never had time for people. He was always on the run. I would love to be described as he was just free to enjoy God. Who doesn't want to be characterized that way? We all want to live a life that's free to enjoy God. When God walked on the earth as Jesus, Jesus rested. Something has gone wrong when we think today rest is for the weak. I don't need rest. I'm a doer. I'm an achiever. I make six figures. I live in in an expensive neighborhood. I've got bills to pay. I don't have time to rest. Only the weak need to rest. That's backwards thinking. As a matter of fact, needing rest and admitting the need to rest, strength. You're fooling yourself if you don't think you need to rest. You need to admit, I need rest. We all need it. So we say yes to God's values. And then we say yes to what's really important. All right, it worked like this. First, I say yes to my pace is crazy. Then I spend a good portion of my life going after God's values. Then when I understand God's values and I embrace them, I say now, when it comes to decision making, I'm going to say yes to what's most important. Because now I understand God's values. That God loves me no matter what. And that God wants me to rest. And God wants me to be with people. Now that I understand that, I'm going to say yes to what's most important. Because as you draw near to God's values, you begin to learn and sense His values. Point three is you make the choice. Now you've got to decide whether you're going to arrange your life by those values or not. Let me give you another illustration from my life. Last year, I got a call from our local recreation club to be a soccer coach. None of my children were playing soccer last year but I said yes anyway because I felt like they really wanted me and they really needed me to be a coach this wasn't the best decision of my life because it created an extra busy schedule for me and it made a hectic life for my family it created a busy schedule for three months just a few weeks ago I got another call this season my oldest son is going to play soccer and I'm going to coach his team 
but they tried to add a second team to that list. I had to turn them down because it was important for me to take some time this fall to focus on my family and make time for them instead of coaching two soccer teams and being away from them for hours every weeknight. But that's a step that I took. Now it's your turn. What's one thing you can do to simplify your life this week? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to use your bulletin, and I want you to write down one thing, one thing that you want to do to simplify your life this week. It doesn't have to be a big thing. It doesn't have to be I'm going to take a week's vacation. It could be something simple like I'm going to go to bed earlier this week, or I'm going to have one thing you can do this week. Pray here in a minute. And I want you to just put your hands on both sides of that bulletin. And we're going to pray this as an offering to God, saying that, God, we want to adhere to your values, and we want to say yes to what's important, and we want to pull the throttle back. And we're going to pray over those as an offering. And then sometime this week, I want you to take a 3 by 5 index card or a, a scrap of paper, And I want you to write down this scripture passage. It's Psalms chapter 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Sometime this week, maybe just a slice of every morning, you could look at that page that you wrote that that verse on and just take a moment to be still and know that God is who he says he is. And my last thought is this. What we've talked about today is radical thinking. It's going against the grain. It's holding up a big time out sign. It's letting off the gas pedal. It's radical. To live this way is to be radical. And to be radical is to be countercultural. And to be countercultural is to be like Jesus. And to be like Jesus should be our goal. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just. Paul's in the midst of worship, Lord, to offer up our our thanks to you. Lord, thank you for loving us unconditionally. Lord, thank you for caring about us so much that you want us to have a deep relationship with you and a deep relationship with others. Lord, thank you for being the example of how important rest is. And thank you for giving us that need. Father, right now, as we think about the, the things that we've written down, Father, as we put our hands on both sides of the paper, Lord, we offer this as an offering to you. And God, we just pray that you would help us this week to say yes to the important things. Lord, help us this week to do what it says on our paper to help us pull back on the throttle just a little bit. God, we love you so much. And we thank you for your words this morning. For it's in Jesus' name. Amen.